I've just got some um, cardstock here that we're going to practice painting on. So one of the first things that I want to um, show you how to do is how to do a little bit of stroke work. Now you can do, I like to do stroke work with either a flat brush or a round brush. Um, you can do it with a filbert brush. So I'm just going to grab some different brushes out of my brush pile here. And um, I've gathered quite a selection of brushes here. And I'm hoping I can show you all of them in the time that I have allotted. So we'll start with these, I think. So I've got mostly rounds and filberts here. So we're going to work on those, and then I will go move on to uh, some flats for stroke work. So I think I'll get a bigger piece of paper in here. Give me more area to work with with the variety of brushes that I have. Now again, you want to wake your brushes up. So how we do that is we fill them full of water. I'm going to sort out the rounds from the filberts here. So these are my filberts and these are my rounds. So I'm just going to take them over to my water basin here. Get it in the shot. And I'm going to just let them soak up some water just by swishing them in some water. You can push them against the side and that gets them, you know, a little bit fuller of water. But we want all of the bristles throughout the entire brush to have water in it. Um, we want to wake it up. This conditions the brush and gets it ready to paint for you. If you just go dip your brush in there and get a little bit of water, then you've only uh, conditioned the outside bristles and the paintbrush is just not going to work for you the way that you want it to work. So we're going to start with move these brushes over here a little bit. Just some round brushes. So I'm just going to put some white paint out here on my palette. Maybe if I can get it open. <laughs> I should be doing my taxes right now instead of a video, but we all know how fun taxes can be. So yeah, I decided I'm going to paint instead. All right, so when I want to do a little bit of stroke work, I am going to get my paint, add some water to my paint. Now, I'm adding it just the same way I do as when I load my brush for base coating by adding a little bit of water to my paint so that I can get a little better um, movement with my paint. I don't want it so thin that we can't see it. So now to do a stroke work, let me zoom you in just a little bit. We're going to lay our brush down. I've got the tip of the brush flat. I'm going to push down on the brush, flatten it out completely. I'm going to make a comma stroke. I'm going to start coming up on the bristles, on the very tips, coming up and curving it the way that I want to curve it. Okay. This is very similar if you watch my lettering video, how I showed you with the, the um, pressure and release. Um, technique and you can go different directions with this. You can come this way and make some strokes and then back this way laying my brush flat. I've got a little bit of a wild hair on the end of this one. So you can just come in here with any round brush. A good round brush is always best and um, make stroke work with your um, round brushes. I'll come and show you how to do it with a, a few bigger ones. It's not really going to be any different. It will just make the stroke bigger, but I can show you how to, to um, bring it up on the tips of the brush to get a little bit thinner line. You want a brush that has good bounce back on the bristles. You don't want it to um, stay in any one particular position because this round brush, even though it's round, I have the ability with this brush to lay my bristles flat on here and load the brush and then I have a flat brush so that I can come in here and make flat lines. So um, 
I don't like the small flat brushes like the twos and the fours because the bristles just get ruined on them so quickly. I don't know what it is about them that they do that. But here with a good round brush that you can keep formed into a flat brush until you are ready for it to become a round brush again, then you just go load it. You know, you, you load it this way for a flat brush and then you load it up on the tip more for a round brush. Then you're back to making your brush round. Okay, you can also, with a good round brush, need a little bit more water in my paint here. We don't want our paint thick, thick when we're doing this. I can make some good dots with my round brush so I don't necessarily have to use the end of my brush, which a lot of people do that, or a dotting tool. Um, practicing your stroke work with a round brush teaches you such excellent brush control. So I suggest you just get some paper and practice away stroking with a round brush. Now I'm going to move to a much larger brush. I prefer to use smaller brushes when I am doing a lot of stroke work, but you can do it with bigger rounds. My go-to brand of brushes is um, Winsor Newton. I think I have a little bit too much water here. I prefer the Winsor Newton round brushes just because they have such good spring to them. And they work good with if you're whether you're doing watercolor or acrylic paint. They seem to work well with both. And then we can just lay it flat and pull straight down, come up on the tip, flat all the way up on the tip. I'm slightly twisting the brush to get it, get it back up on its round form to give it that nice long tail. So laying the brush flat, coming up on the tip, slightly turning the brush, and coming up on the tip. Let's see if I can zoom you in to see that just a little bit better. Okay, laying the brush flat, pulling back. I'm starting to come up on the tips, depending on how long you want this to be. Up on the very tip, I slightly turned the brush and then pulled out. Okay, so again, nice big comma strokes. both directions. It's all in the pressure and release that you give on the brush. Pressure coming up on the very tip. Very lightly release the end of that brush. Okay. Uh, again with this one you should be able to flatten it out and make a nice flat stroke. Okay. And this is a six round. First brush I used, hmm, I'm guessing it's a four. But my number's kind of worn off. Okay, those are Winsor Newton brushes. Let me go to another brush that I have not used very much. This is a Black Gold by Dynasty. So um, I've not used this one much, so. Let me see how I like it for stroke work. One more paint out here. Alright, so again, a little bit of water in the paint. Load your brush up. Okay, let's see how we do here. Lay the brush down, come up on the tip. This one has good spring back as well. I prefer the Winsor Newton, maybe because I'm just used to painting with them. But I prefer how how the um, how the bristles perform when I'm doing my stroke work. Okay. 
Okay, so this is a pretty good one. Let's see if I can make it into a flat brush, if it will stay in a flat brush position. Now, it will not. I can see it's already, the tips of this are more rounded. So when I try to flatten it out, it wants to bounce back to a round brush. So, I mean, I can push it down to make a flat line stroke, but it won't stay as flat. I think because the way the bristles, the tips of the bristles are cut a little bit different. So you can get up on the very, very tip of your brush and do some very thin. You have to stay up on the the very tip when you want to do things like this. You can't um, be giving any pressure to the brush straight up and down. You're using your wrist. So, actually you'll be using more of your whole arm because your whole arm is doing this movement. Okay, so that is another round brush and the rest of these here are Winsor Newtons except for this one. Um, this is a Robert Simmons one, and these, the Windsor Newtons I buy online, Hofcraft carries them a lot. Um, the Black Gold, I think you can, you get this brand from the Brush Guys. You can probably get any of these brushes from the Brush Guys. This one, I believe, came from uh, Michaels, if they still carry it. They don't carry too many brushes at Michaels anymore, so let's see how well this one does. It's pretty good for stroke work. It has a good bounce back. So it does pretty well. All right, let's see about getting up on the tip. Not too bad, it's got a little bit of a I mean, the bristles, bristles don't want to stay together as well. But it's a pretty good brush overall. Um, and I'm sure it's a more affordable brush, so that is an option. Okay, so let's do some stroke work with some filbert brushes. So let me get these woke up. Okay, so let's see. I might have all the same size here. I've got a four and a six. Let's see if I've got an eight in here. This one is an eight, but it is a moon filbert. So I don't believe it is a good brush for stroking, but I will give it a shot. Okay, so for the filberts, we already know that they can get a flat edge, but the tips are always going to be round. So you'll load it up and, you know, it's pretty flat all the time. So we're going to put it on the chisel edge of the brush and lay it down and pull and stroke. And you can get the same type of strokes, although for this stroke it's a little bit easier because you don't have to twist the brush, the bristles. It's already up on the chisel edge when you bring it up. So um, that is good to to know that way, but it does pretty good for stroke work. I mean, it's, it's a very good stroke work brush. Um, one of the other things that I like to use a filbert for, it's one of the main things I use it for, so let's say I want to paint a pine tree. I will start up here at the very tip of the tree and then turn it on its edge just a little bit and tap, just tap some in there. I'm giving very little pressure to the brush. You, you won't necessarily have that line down the center, so your tree would start right about there. You, you really don't need to bring that line down because it can be tricky to cover it up. So you just start tapping where the top of your tree is, and then you just come out a little bit farther, start giving a little bit more pressure, depending on how big your tree is. Now this particular brush will not give me a great big tree because it's... Uh, Again, we just start at the top, I'm up on the very tip of the brush, just kind of going back and forth. And then I'm going to start just giving the brush a little bit of pressure as I come down. 
and form my tree. You can go back and fill in as you need to. Okay, so that's one another use for that. And that was the four filberts. So let's go to a six. empty. So six. Load it up the same way. You've got a little bit of water in your brush. It will be the same. You can just get bigger strokes out of the bigger the brush is, the bigger strokes you can get. Doesn't mean you can't get smaller strokes. You just don't push as hard on the brush. So don't give as much pressure on the brush and you can still get those smaller strokes. So again, this teaches you good brush control. So you can learn how to give pressure when you need pressure on the brush and not give pressure. The consistency of your paint. Um, it's just a good uh, thing to, to learn. Anything that can teach you good brush control is something you should practice. So this is the Moon Filbert, and I can't even remember what I bought this one for. Probably a project I was, class I was doing. This one does not give, make the ends very well. Because the bristles are extremely short on this. Now this might be good for doing a tree. Maybe. I did not do very well with that tree. It's all over the place. So Yeah, I don't even like it for a tree. I'm not really sure what I bought this brush for, but I'm sure I bought it for a reason. Ooh, it makes a good dry brushing brush. So if you've got it, uh, use it for however you were taught to use it by an instructor. I don't even remember what I bought it for. I'm sure you can float with it so let me side load. So we just side load on one edge of the brush. Let's see if we can float with this brush. Yes we can get a nice nice float with this brush. So that can be used as a floating brush. Okay, so we've gone through some rounds I've, and some filberts. I've got a um, another brush here that is a round brush. It is a sable brush. It's a Windsor & Newton as well, but its bristles are a little bit different. I'm not really sure what I bought this for, but I'm going to... Oh, it's really runny. Shake that up. I'm going to attempt a... Um, a little bit different of a technique with it. So I'm going to load it with my white paint. Got way too much water in my brush, so I'm going to go get that off. So I'm going to load it with my white paint. Then I'm going to tip into that blue paint. Then I'm going to lay the brush down splay out the tips of the... I've got it pushed completely flat all the way up to the ferrule. I'm going to push forward and pull back. Hmm. Interesting. Now, I've never taken a Maureen McNaughton class, but I think this is similar to what she does. I don't know. I've never taken a class. I've never done a project of hers, so I wouldn't know. So do not quote me on that. Um, push forward and pull back. I'm going to come up, up on the tip, but it doesn't really, I don't know. It doesn't quite do what I thought it would do. So let's see if it does good strokes. It does okay strokes. It doesn't, I don't like the way the ends come off like that. 
So it doesn't quite finish out the stroke the way that I would like a stroke to be finished out. So again, I probably bought this for a class and I don't even remember what I used it for. <laughs> okay, so I want to show you some strokes with some flat brushes real quick because you can get good stroke work with um, flat brushes. Now I also want to tell you that um, if you, now I'm a certified one stroke instructor and I have to tell you that learning good uh, stroke work helps you in all of your painting. But the uh, one stroke brushes, if you get her um, uh, one stroke brushes, they are very good for teaching you um, they hold a lot of paint, so you can you can really carry a stroke a long ways. Let me go back to this paper here. So um, her brushes are really good. Although I'm limiting myself on my area here, so I'm not. But they will hold a lot of paint. You can learn a lot. I mean, if you just need some affordable brushes to practice doing stuff with before you decide to go out and spend a lot of money. Um, these are good brushes to um, paint with. I mean, a, a lot of people just call them craft brushes, but I really think that they are um, good brushes for learning. So, just a tip there on an affordable brush that holds up well as long as you take care of it and keep it clean. I have so many of her brushes that I have had for years. I've probably had some of them 14 years or more. I mean, all right, so let me wake up my other two flat brushes here. Hopefully I got some different sizes. I have um, different different flat brush here. This is a faux squirrel brush. I'm going to load it up. I really, I think this makes a good base coating brush. Um, so for a flat brush, you again, like the filbert, you would stay up on the chisel edge. And yeah, this one just doesn't have, it doesn't have the spring back for the, for the tip. The tip is a little bit messy. But um, this is a good brush for base coating in your background. So if you want to blend in a couple of colors, it's a good brush for that. Um, I don't really know that I would use that for anything else, but um, like I said, you may have one of these brushes that you know all kinds of uses for. Okay, let's go to our flat ones. I'm going to start with a, an 8 flat here. And good brushes are extremely important if you want your work to be uh, a little more, you don't want rough edges and things like that. So invest in good brushes and then when you do, please take care of them. It is so extremely important to take care of them. All right, so we know this brush does good stroke work. We can also do good line work. We can come up on the chisel edge and get a thin line. We could, you know, do checks this way. We could have a fat line and a skinny line and a skinny line and a fat line. So, I mean, this is a good brush. This brush is good for, for dry brushing. So you come up on the, the tip of the bristles when you're dry brushing. You can do it with wet paint just as long as you don't give the brush pressure. The more pressure you give that's how you're going to end up with stuff and you're not going to be happy. So when you're dry brushing with a flat brush go like this. I like to dry brush with older brushes so some that are starting to get a little bit more worn out are the brushes that I would use to do my dragging and dry brushing and stuff. Okay, let me go to a little bit bigger brush here and see how it does. We'll just do a couple of strokes here. Don't need more paint. I 
I'm not getting a good tail here with this bigger brush and maybe I'm just not flipping it just right yeah. that side got a little bit better I think I'm just not quite getting up on the bristles quite right because this side did well when I did it that direction but over here see all these ends on on these tails oh not good not good you don't want that and then again you can use it for all of your flat work all of your base coating in um, if you're base coating in large areas or rough surfaces use your older brushes I, I always recommend when you're base coating to go to your older brushes and use them um, you know, if you're base coating a whole surface, like a small ornament, and you're doing it with a brush, then um, I always use my older brushes, you know, the wear and tear. If you are base coating rock line, I recommend that you use a roller to base coat it and lightly sand it after each coat, or use a really old brush if you're doing a small piece, because the rock line can be very, very hard on your brushes. I learned that one the very hard way when I ruined some really good brushes on a project I was doing. Okay, this is a half inch. Half inch is my absolute favorite brush of the flat brushes. Not for doing stroke work, obviously, but um, for base coating in because it is such a good size for just about any project. You can still get up on the chisel edge here and do some thin lines. So, flat brushes, they're a must-have in your brush basin, your brush, uh, and all of your brushes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on to a, another piece of paper here. Okay, um, angle brushes. Let's do some of those. Now, with flat brushes as well, I... I tend to float with them a lot. Um, let's wide angle you out here. So I load my flat brush the same, you know, the same way I would an angle brush. A little bit of water here, just on that edge, and then you can float with your flat brush. water and paint you need both especially if you're going to walk out because you're walking out you're laying the paint down in the water edge that you just let down and then it eventually fades that paint completely away I love flat brushes for floating my my all-time favorite brush for floating though is a curved flat but it is a brush that is no longer available you could make your own. <laughs> All you do is take a flat brush and curve one edge of it like a filbert. But these brushes are no longer available and I was very um, sad when the company discontinued this brush because it is one that I taught a lot of people to float with. To, um, and it saddens me that they discontinued it, but it is a good floating brush. You can base coat in with this brush as well. Um, let's see how it does for doing stroke work. Not good for stroke work. So it's just basically a good floating brush. So if you have it, I highly recommend you using it and practicing with it until you're very happy with it. Now, angle brushes. Uh, as, in, as many of you have watched a lot of my videos know, they are not my favorite brush. They are an excellent brush to use. Please do not um, confuse my not liking them to them not being good brushes. They are an excellent brush to use. And they are great for floating. It's just never been my go-to brush to do that. And I know a lot of teachers paint with only an angle brush, which is great. I have taken classes with teachers who use only an angle brush, mostly to paint with. 
and it did great for for um, that class I loved it but it's not one of my favorite and I don't want because it's not one of my favorites for you to not try this brush and use this brush because it is a great brush for floating I don't have near enough water in my brush I think that's why I struggle with an angle brush because I can never get the right amount of water in one to work the way that I like for my brushes to work for it to carry the paint I feel like it forces me to put my brush in a position I don't want it to be in <laughs> but um, it is it really is a good brush and you are going to get a lot of good use for it out of it so if you have an area on your design that is got a V like this an angle brush is going to be great for pushing that paint in there, getting it in there and rounding that area and bringing it out. Um, it's just, it's, I just really want you to use this, to try this brush and use it because, just because it's not my favorite brush. I mean, I still use this brush. There are some designs that it's just a must have. Um, I just want you to um, I need more, more water I can tell already it's a great brush for floating now, I want you to always use whatever brush you are comfortable using whatever brush you've learned with that you've developed a good it's like your best friend that brush when you pick it up you know it's going to do great for you so I want you to, to um, you know, just practice with your brushes. What's good for me is going to be awesome for you probably. Okay, let's go to some rake brushes here. And you can get rake brushes in flat or filbert style. This one has really, really long, really long bristles on the end of it. This is great for, I like to use it for making Santa's beard and things. They're great for fur, they're great for grasses. Um, they're great for spattering with. They are my absolute go-to brush for spattering. Now, when you use a rake brush, you have to have a little bit of water in there to get it to flow off of your brush. Inky consistency works best, especially if you're using it for grasses or fur. And you can do little short strokes with it for fur. Of course, you'd, you'd be doing a big animal if you were using a brush this big, but um, you can get a lot done by using a rake brush if you're doing fur. Okay? Grasses. You can get up on the chisel edge of these bristles and create some individual like grasses or use the brush like this I'm trying to see where you can get on camera and then pull up and you can get more grass kind of like I did over here okay so that's a flat rake brush so a filbert rake brush will be very very similar again water in your brush now with the filberts because I can't see the bristles as well on the end of this I like to push the bristles out so I make sure I've got paint in between those those bristles and then again you can go up on the chisel edge you can do short little strokes and I don't have my paint near thin enough for this brush this brush has the bristles more packed in there more condensed so the paint has to be a little bit thinner and you really have to be straight up and down on this brush just tickling the very tips of those bristles on to your project The consistency of the paint will be key with this particular brush. This is a Simply Simmons one. This is one you can buy at Hobby Lobby. So it doesn't do as well as that. That other one that I used was actually a one-stroke one. 
I don't even know if you can get this one because this was originally made for the paper um, when she had the paper paint which she no longer has I think she has this particular brush still but I think it has a different color handle and maybe it's meant for some other product that she sells and then this one my very favorite brush of all time that I hope I never lose or damage it's a royal I think I bought it at Hobby Lobby as well again your paint needs to be thinned down to inky consistency and then you can maybe I should go to my blue paint here so you can see it a little bit better although that didn't help because I had my white mixed with it so <laughs> so you can paint in your your beard so Santa's beard can be just perfect you can paint in some fur if you're working on a very large animal grasses again you can do grasses with this consistency of the paint is very very key okay so that's your rake brushes and again they require practice to getting your paint the right consistency and loaded well all right um, I have some other filberts here that I wanted to show you now all not all filberts are created equal these particular filberts are um, they're not good for doing stroke work at least I can't get them to do stroke work they work very well for if you're um, doing some dry brushing so way too much water in my brush so they, they work really well for adding some dry brushing onto a project I have too much water in my brush they're um, very very dense they have a lot of bristles packed in there um, so it's one that you have to play, play around with this one is I don't even know where I got this brush it's got very, very, very soft bristles. I don't even know. I'm, it looks like I've used this brush, but I don't know what I've used it for. All right, let me see if it will do good strokes. No. It has uh, too many bristles and they want to splay apart when you get to the end down here so it does not do well for stroke work so this is another one of those where you'd probably use some dry brushing with it I'm not really sure what I would use that brush for okay alright um, these brushes I don't use hardly ever but they're good for doing clouds and grasses similar to a rake brush so you can you can pull lots of grasses up with these if you have your paint the right consistency you could do fur with these but you would have to make sure you keep the paint only in the the middle of bristles um, you can lay it down fat, flat like this for getting like foliage down on the ground. Um, for doing clouds, you could. It's hard to do on paper because the paper just wants to suck up all of my paint. So you could do some clouds with it. Just kind of scuff in some some clouds in there. It's good for making clouds and foliage and grasses. Okay, so these brushes are some like scruffy type brushes. These I only use for dry brushing. So I always use it dry. I remove the paint on a dry paper towel, which I don't have here at the moment. Let me grab one up here. I take it off on a dry paper towel and then you can rub it onto your design 
very gentle pressure when you start out, generally a circular motion, but if you've got something that's curved like this, like when I am going around a moon, then it won't be a circular motion. It will just be up on the very tips, very, very lightly rubbing that paint on there. You can do cheeks. The less paint you have on there, the more you will push. And it's always good to start out with the lightest of pressure if you've got a large area that you, you have got to shade. And you've already shaded it with your angle brush, your flat brush, whatever you're going to use. But it needs to come out farther. You can use this, one of these stiffer brushes, and they come in, in different sizes. Get one that will fit your area. And follow that shape all as far out as you want to. And then you can come back and glaze over it with a little bit of paint to intensify the color of what you just scumbled in there. Alright, so some more stiffer brushes here. Um, this is also a good uh, dry brushing. It is a filbert one, so it's going to remain tight in areas as opposed to this one, which is domed and round. It's going to cover a big circular area, but this you can keep tight. So let's say you've got, you need to just rub a little bit of color right up against that edge. These kind of brushes are good for that. This is a sharp brush. These are moon filberts. They're very stiff bristled and they have a large variety of sizes. You can get a whole set of them. And the brush guys have these. I believe that's where I got those. I'll try to put a link to their website below. Um, these brushes, I have two different kinds. I have a Royal and a Low Cornell. Low Cornell, I currently still have some to sell on my website. But these brushes, I use wet. So I get them wet. Get the excess water out. And then I go load my brush with it and really push the paint in there. These kind of brushes you want to be as rough and mean to as possible because you want those bristles to really splay out there. So if you're making foliage on a tree or you're making a bush, let's just put a bush here. And another little one over here. Every time I load this, I need to really splay those bristles out. The more you use this brush, I would just say when you get some of these brushes because they're really compacted together when you first get them, just beat them up. Just really, you know, get in there and push those bristles out and beat them up, you know. Just be as rough with them as you can. Now if you're doing a tree, let's say you've got a tree here and you've got some some limbs, then you can tap in some of your foliage on the limbs and this will really help form the shape of your tree and you want to have a lot of open spaces in your tree when you're making it you don't want to come in here and just completely fill it in like this because then you're just making a bush so have more open spaces in your tree when you're making a tree okay so that's what those are good for See what's next. Um, I've got some, um, just a couple more brushes I want to show you here. So I have some. Uh, this brush right here, it's very small. Let me zoom in. This is a chisel brush. So if you are doing some small checks somewhere. These brushes are great. So what you would want to do is draw your line, an erasable line, preferably a straight line, not crooked like I just drew. And you can go in between your lines and make your checks. Okay, if you need to go this way for basket weaving, they're great for making basket weave.
Okay, basket weave is pretty, pretty easy. You just start out with one row and go in between. Then your second row goes in between here. Okay, then you go back to back to here. <laughs> I'm trying to think where I'm at. And you can weave your basket. Curve it, you know, whatever shape your basket is. This is a chisel uh, brush. This is a low Cornell brush. I think I s might have a, one size of this on my website, but I'm not sure. Um, my, uh, I have not replenished my stock for 2018, so I haven't gotten in there yet and seen what I've got left. Um, okay, for liner brushes. Now, my go-to liner brush is this um, 10 O liner by Low Cornell. It has really long bristles. I have learned to use this brush well. If you struggle with longer bristles, um, I would say practice. Um, you always want to add water to your paint when you're using a liner brush. And so you've got it, uh, your paint thinned down, your brush loaded up. So you can do a lot of different things with this brush. Um, it can do some small, very detailed stroke work. Um, it's great for lettering. If you're doing fine detail letters. Of course, that's, that's pretty crappy right there, what I just painted, so completely ignore that. You want to stay up on the very tip of the brush, have your brush loaded well. You can do little fine hairs with it. I do a lot of my fine hair work with um, this particular brush. Okay, sorry, I had a little interruption there. So back to this brush. Up on the very tip, you can get some really great detail with this brush. Up on the very tip, you can get some super duper fine lines. Again, it takes practice. I couldn't do this when I first started painting with this brush. So practice is key, but it's my go-to liner brush. Okay, another good liner brush <clears throat> is this one from Royal. And um, it's great for getting fine detail as well for stroking in some hairs or if you're working on a small project and you need some fine grasses in there you know if you're doing limbs on a tree this this is a great brush for getting those fine limbs on a tree okay and this one is a size 2 oh and then this is a one round brush again it's a Windsor brush Windsor Newton brush but their round brushes are just awesome so again you can get nice fine details here with this brush you can it, it's these brushes are excellent for lettering so we can do stroke work with it we can do all kinds of things with it fine detail on tree limbs as well great brush Okay, another liner that I have that I have only used this once just to play around with is this one. Uh, I just got it recently at a convention. It's a sharp brush. It's a script liner, but your paint all stays right here in this part of the brush. And then you've got this long end that you can detail with. So you load up the brush. Get you on camera for this. Load it up with some paint. I'm going to get a little bit of water here so I can really load up. Again, inky consistency when you're using any kind of liner brush. Really load it up in there. So all of that paint that's in there should flow down off of the tip of the brush. And again, I've only used this practice with it a couple of times. But it should go for a long, long way. And as with any brush, a little bit more water. You know, you can 
The more pressure you give on it, the fatter the line. But you definitely want to stay up on the tip of this brush. And I don't have enough water in it because if I did, my, my paint would be going forever. So your paint should just flow out of it and go and go and go until the brush is completely empty of paint. I did not have it loaded well for a demonstration there, so it's one I still need to practice with because it's, it's a new brush for me. So, Alright, I've got a couple of Deerfoot brushes, and they're all basically the same. You can use them dry or wet, so you'll pounce in, like if you're doing fur on Santa's hat, you can pounce this in for your fur on Santa's hat or his cuffs. Um, you can pounce in foliage with it. So it's just a good scruffy type brush to have. It comes in several different sizes and I believe there's several different brands of brushes that carry it. Okay, the last brush that I want to demonstrate for you is a brush that I use a lot in my painting. And it is a mop brush. Now, mop brushes come in all different sizes. Can you believe this teeny tiny little brush is a mop brush? And they come in black or white. This one's kind of brown. This one's domed. These are all more filbert type brushes. These two I uh, do currently still have some on my website. But the half inch size is my absolute go-to brush. Um, how you use these brushes, so I don't know how well this will do on paper but I will give it a try. I'll use a little bit more water than usual. So let's say I have mopped here and my line's a little bit um, jagged and rough. I will mop in, or I've painted on here, so now I'm going to mop in the water section. See normally that right there, that shadow line, it would mop that right out of there. You can also um, use your mop brush for blending. So if you want to blend out a little bit, you can do that. Um, this little one, you can blend with it as well. If you're in a very small area and you need to blend out, it's going to be hard for me to do on this paper. It just is going to suck it out quicker than I can get the brush to it. So you can work this, this little brush and work out a nice fine area. And then these domed ones as well. I really like these domed ones and they come in a big set. You can get them individually or set. Again, I believe I got mine from the brush guys at a convention. And again, you can mop and blend. And it works much better if you're on a hard surface. Now, my mop brushes, I always use completely dry. I never, ever use them wet. To clean them, I go to a damp place on my paper towel. And then I go to a dry place to clean it off. To, to dry it off. Um, the reason I like the white ones is because I can see when they're dirty. That's got a little bit of paint in it. So I clean it off on my wet paper towel. And then go over here. I've got a lot of water in that brush and dry it off. I tend to have more than one on hand if I accidentally get it too wet to where it's not dry enough for me to use it again then I can grab another one. Now, it's very, very important to clean these brushes after every time that you use them because if you don't, when you go to pounce and mop your piece or blend it a little bit, you're going to pick up paint in this brush, which is fine. It's a dry brush, so it's not really going up into the bristles, but it's setting on the end of those bristles. And when you go to a, another spot on your piece that is damp, what it's going to do is reactivate the paint that's on the ends of those bristles. And you are going to just transfer whatever is there right onto your design. And you won't be happy at all. 
you'll be sad but it's it's fixable if you do that you can just go to a um, and get a flat brush and dampen that area quickly and remove it with a, um, a dampen it and remove it with the, the damp brush or paper towel or lightly use a um, if the area is damp you can use a white eraser to very gently erase that paint and remove it off of your design Okay. Now I have seen some teachers use this brush wet and to actually paint with it. Uh, this is a Joe Sonia one. It's a Sure Touch Possibilities brush. Now this particular one I have seen other instructors paint with this brush. Um, so you can you can do that. Com completely your choice. Okay. Um, practice with these brushes is what I recommend. Um, there are just so many uses for so many brushes. Clean them well after every time that you use a brush so that it's ready to go for you when you are ready to paint again. Um, so let me wide angle out here a little bit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you some tips for cleaning your brushes when you are done painting with them. Now, if you are at a class, I recommend that you carry a small bottle of Germex with you. Um, just squirt some out on your palette paper at the end of the class when you're done. Okay, and take every brush that you have used and clean it with that. Get as much of the paint out if you still have paint in your brush. This one doesn't have any in it. And then go to your clean water and rinse it out. This will get most of the paint out of your brush so that you can get it home without worrying about the brush being damaged. Now, once you're home, you need to take the time. I know a lot of times if we've gone to retreat or a class that's been all day, the last thing we want to sit down and do is clean our brushes, but that's a good habit to get into. So I um, have an old paint bottle and I keep my brush cleaner in here because this is the brush cleaner that I use, but I have a huge bottle of it. I just um, got this one free in a bag of something somewhere. So, um, but it, it, this is a good size to carry with you too, but this is so much smaller if you want to take, like if you're going to a convention, you know you're going to be there all week. This is a good size to take with you to clean your brushes. Um, so I just wrote on here brush cleaner so I would know what it is. I always take my brush basin with me. Okay, you don't have to have a brush basin. You can use a foam plate, take some foam plates with you and clean uh, on a foam plate. <clears throat> you can clean on, right on your palette paper. That is, that is where I highly recommend if you're at convention, you clean right on your palette paper because then you can just take that and throw it in the trash. Um, if you use a brush basin like this, don't ever put this cleaner down your sink. Um, usually the paper towel that I end up um, drying my brushes on after I clean them I take it and I wipe out all of this cleaner completely out of it um, and then I will go and wash it with some soap and water but I make sure that all of the cleaner is out of it before um, I go so then your brushes you just want to work it work them into this um, brush cleaner I don't usually use this scraper because it really damages your brushes. If you've got some way up here in the ferrule, you could just tickle it, the ferrule part, over those bristles, but um, I don't use those bristles. I mean, even for my rough brushes, I don't use those bristles. So then you just want to rinse it out in some clean water. And um, these brushes here, I tend to clean mostly with hand sanitizer. But if you are a person who has left paint in it, and I have to admit I am one of those people who has left paint in her stiff brushes before, um, then you want to use this cleaner. The hand sanitizer will loosen it up, but it's not going to take it out. So this brush, it's hard as a rock. I have dried the paint in this one. 
So I used it for something and then never went back and cleaned. Oh my gosh, I can't even push on it. It's so hard. So I'm going to try and work some of that cleaner in there. Okay, it's loosening it up. And it is going to remove every bit of that paint out of there. And then I will take this, the, my stiffer brushes, I take to my sink and um, rinse out really, really, really well because the uh, bristles are so much denser in there. And I don't want any of this cleaner to set in there and possibly damage my brushes from being in there for a really long time. But you can see how much uh, color was in that brush. <laughs> Now, don't think just because I've got color in there, I can't use this for my other brushes. It's perfectly fine to use for your other brushes. Uh, just continue through your whole line of brushes. My mop brushes, I never use in this stuff. I take them, uh, I try and keep them clean as I use them, but if they've got some paint in them, I take them to my sink and use a very small amount of hand soap or just hand sanitizer and clean them out and rinse them out really, really well. So I never, never, never put my mop brushes in this brush cleaner. Um, this one looks like it has some paint in it. So I'm going to try and clean it out. It had some white or some kind of color of paint in it. So um, it's very important to keep your brushes clean. And... Rinse them out well. I lay them flat to dry. I never, I know these brush basins have these holes in it where you can put your brushes in them. You can put your brushes in them like this, but I don't ever do that. I lay my brushes dry to flat. I actually have this little um, container here. It's what I got with a roller. It came in a kit like this at Lowe's. And I turn it this direction, and I lay my brushes brush, brushes in here. So, because if I lay them in this way, they're going to go down into that well, and the, and the bristles are going to get bent. So I lay them in this way, and I let them dry in here. Or I just lay them. If I have a lot of brushes, I'll just lay them out flat on a paper towel, and uh, on a dry paper towel, and let them completely dry, and then come back and put them away. But you don't ever want to um, dry your brushes standing up like this because any of the moisture that's in there is going to run straight down into your brush. You don't ever want to soak your brushes in water. So let's say you want to wake up a brush. My water is completely filthy. But let's say you want to wake a brush up. So you decided to set it in your water basin. But this side over here is much deeper. So look how much farther that water is going to go up on my ferrule. And even over here, if I sit over here, that's completely down in my ferrule. So all that all that water is going to go in between there. It's going to cause the glue eventually to loosen because I have a couple that the ends come completely off of and I've tried regluing them a couple times but they won't stay now. So really to wake your brushes up you really just want to do it as you need the brush. Wake it up like this by pushing it against or really flicking it in the water and letting the bristles get awake. Don't just leave it in your water. Don't ever go for days at a time and leave your brushes in the water. That is really not good on them. You spend so much money on good quality brushes, you want to take very, very good care of them. So that is my brush demo. I'm sure there are lots of brushes that I forgot to demo that I have because I am literally brush poor in this house. Um, I have so many brushes. <laughs> it's ridiculous and I never want to get rid of one. So. There you go. Um, I, I keep them forever. But I do have a particular brush bin that is just for my grandkids to use. So, And my husband when he needs a brush out in his shop. So that is uh, my brush demo for today. And I thank you so much for um, joining me. If you've got any questions, let me know. I will try to remember all the links that I mentioned in here. The brush Guys, I think, was the main one. And then my website, I do sell a few brushes. So um, I recommend... Um, you getting really good quality brushes. Practice your stroke work. Practice, 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 practice makes perfect, literally. Um, just sit, take a few minutes every day. You don't even have to have paint. You can just have water. Take a dark piece of paper and um, your brush and practice making strokes with just water. 
Okay, you can do it. It's it's just um, lo very relaxing to sit down and practice your stroke work, and it will improve your um, painting skills tremendously. All right, guys, um, please subscribe. Please click the bell to get future notifications of my videos. Share my videos, and um, I appreciate every one of you, and I will see you guys on the next one. Happy painting, everyone.